do what's right for yourself, do what's right for your children, and 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 file the petition really early so that you have a good claim, and then things will work out for you. Hello, everyone. I'm Leslie Rohde, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Lawyers. We're talking about something today that is happening to some parents who are paying child support. They're going through child support modification downward, all due to a loss of income. We're happy today to be talking to attorney Heim Steinberger from New York City. Welcome. It's my pleasure to be with you and to share my information with your viewers, Leslie. Always good to see you. Well, Heim, this is timely, we know, because of the pandemic that we're in. People are losing jobs more altogether or temporarily losing them. And maybe they just can't pay the same kind of child support. So what are parents in New York, New York where you are, what are they to do in a case like this? So the first, the most important thing to remember for any parent who, owes, who has to pay child support, in other words, any non-custodial parent, the most important thing to remember is that the moment you lose a job, and this could be the last thing on your mind when you, you, you lose your job or you're not sure you're losing your job, the moment you get laid off is to rush down to the courthouse, which we'll come back to that in a moment in the time of pandemic, but to rush down to the courthouse and make an application to modify, to reduce your child support for whatever period you're unemployed. So if you wait until later, everybody hopes that they get reinstated, that they get their job back, that they start working again. We hope that the pandemic will be over soon, that the governor will open the state and allow us to go back to work. But what people don't realize is that all of the child support during the time that you're unemployed, it accrues and it keeps go, it keeps adding up. And, and there's a statute in New York that says that once it's accrued, it can't be waived by the court. And we'll come back to that in a moment as well. And so it's really important that if you lose your job or if you get laid off, to rush down to the courthouse and make an application to modify your child support. Because otherwise, whenever you get the job again, not only do you have to pay the current child support, but you'll have to pay back child support. And it's usually people struggle just to pay their child support. People usually can't pay double measure of child support. So that can be devastating. That can hang over somebody's head for a long time. That could certainly add up. So so what are the qualifications for this? I mean, is it just somebody who just lost their job or do you have to be out of work for a certain amount of time? So I recommend that the moment you lose your job, even though you hope to get one, you go down and you make a modification. And the worst that can happen is you get another job a week later and so you'll ask for a suspension of one week or, or you'll withdraw your petition. That'll be okay. But if, you, if the loss tends up, if your layoff tends up to be later, it could be really devastating. Now, understand that the, the, the issue may not be determined for several months. By the time it gets heard in court and the judge allows and the parties come in and they testify and the judge renders a decision, that could take months or years. However, it will be retroactive to the date that you file the petition. So the filing date becomes very important and so absolutely file the first thing you do after you lose your job before you even go out, and of course you have to go out and try to find other jobs, in normal times, go out and try to find other jobs, but, and, and maintain a diary of your, of your job search. But the first thing to do before you even start your job hunt is to go down and make a modification petition. Now, of course, because of the pandemic, the courts in New York State are closed and they're not accepting petitions. And that poses a problem because of the statute. I was talking to a couple of chief judges and they advise that the magistrates are going to be sensitive to this issue. So you might want to mail in a petition and get it, send it, return receipt or get it postmarked and keep a record of that so that when you come into court, you say, Your Honor, or, or your, your, well, Your Honor, whether it's to support magistrate or to a judge and say, look, I've, I've mailed it in and at least there will be a postmark or you'll have some sort of receipt to prove that you, that you mailed it. And so that the, whatever decision gets made, gets made back retroactive to about the date or the date that you lost your job. I'm glad you addressed that about the pandemic because I was going to ask that and I'm sure it's possibly different in every state right now. So just getting it out there as quickly as possible in any way that you can so that someone knows that you have filed something would be most important. Yes, yeah, so my colleagues and I have spoken about different methodologies that we might use to overcome the statute that generally doesn't allow it. Maybe you put the other side on notice, you, you mail it in and you file a copy to the, to the children's uh, uh, custodial parents so that they know that it's coming, they're on notice. And then when you walk into court, you say, look, I've done as much as I could. The courts were closed, I couldn't do anymore. 
So it's important to make that effort. It's important to get some documentation on it so that just in case, because I don't want to see people hurt. And then, then when, when the world opens up again, when we go back to, or, or in the typical case, when the, the world returns to the normal, when you get a job, when the court hears, hears your matter, the court might say, look, I'll give you a reduction for these six weeks or for these three months, and now you come back and you make the child support. If you get a job with more money that you're being paid more, you might, get, you might have to pay more child support. If you get a job that pays less, you might get a permanent reduction but for the time that you were out of work and you were searching for work and you couldn't find it, you might get a, a, a deeper reduction or you might get a complete suspension. The minimum that parents have to pay is $25 a month or $50 a month, depending on whether you're in the uh, poverty income, you know, you're below the poverty income guidelines or below the self-support reserve. So uh, make that application really quickly. And if you can afford most people who who can't afford to pay child support, can't afford to hire a lawyer to help defend against the child support, but protect yourself so that you don't get hurt at the back end of this. A lot of people I know, Haim, have not lost their job altogether, they think now, but they've been told it's just temporary. When we get through all this, we'll hire you back. Is there any change in the way that those people should be uh, addressing this? The, the same thing applies. Uh, the I would recommend that you that you make that application for downward modification for that time period that you were, now if you're receiving an income, if your employer is paying you your full salary throughout, then, then God bless them, then keep paying your child support. Your children need the money to live on as well. But if in fact you're not being paid anything, you want to make that petition for a downward modification for that period of time that you didn't receive any income. In your experience with these cases, I'm wondering, do judges normally reduce this child support in a case when someone has lost a job? Or is there any trend that you see? So that issue is fraught. It, it, it happens way too often that a parent who's making a certain amount of money and then the moment the courts order them to pay child support, oops, I lost my, my, I lost my work. And we call it um, what was it, sudden income deficiency, SIDS, or sudden income deficiency syndrome, or, 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 or some other variation of that, where people voluntarily give up their jobs. So it's important to remember that if you voluntarily reduce your income, you will not get, in, in, in my state for sure, in New York for sure, you will not get a reduction in your child support. Every person is required to use their best efforts and to support their children in a manner that's appropriate for their income potential. So if you do lose your job, you have to go out, you have to look for, for comparable work, for work that's commensurate with your abilities and your, your skills and training and ability to do work. And you should also keep a job diary set. When you walk back into court, you can say, Your Honor, on January 1st, I approached these three companies. On January 2nd, I approached these three. And I kept walking up and down the street. I kept applying. I kept trying to do any job that I can. A judge may say, well, you could have driven a taxi, we'll impose a bare minimum, or you could have worked for a lesser job. But of course, you want to find a job that's commensurate with the with your skills and training, and you want to find the best job you can for that. But if you can't do that, then take anything to support your children. And you mentioned something a minute ago, too, about finding some help in these cases. Finding a lawyer, I know, is very important, who has some experience in this. but. What if you think you can't afford a lawyer? That, that's difficult. That's the one problem I don't have. I tell clients I, I can find solutions for every problem you have. The one solution I can't find is how do you get money to pay me? Finding good, high-quality representation. There are lots of lawyers out there. Everybody, Every lawyer has a different degree of skill. Every lawyer brings a different level of commitment to their clients and to their, to their work. Every lawyer t brings a different amount of creativity. Sometimes you have to be creative to find a way around what seems to be a, 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 an impenetrable wall. And, and so I've won cases that, that seemed impossible. I, I showed up in court once where the judge said, counselor, you know your client's got one foot in Rikers. And I said, yes, judge, I know that. I need four weeks to prepare papers. Showed up four weeks later, had a two-hour oral argument in front of the judge, and I spun her head around where she came away with a completely opposite view of the case that she had before I showed up. And I was the fourth lawyer on the case, so other lawyers had tried, they weren't able to do that. So getting a good lawyer, it, it won't be cheap. Um, I don't try to be the cheapest, I do try to be the best, 
When you meet with a lawyer, check for their competence, their knowledge of the area, their commitment to it, their dedication to you as a client, and their commitment to law and order and to finding a way. To, so the single most important thing in lawyering is you want to find a way that, that wins over the judge's heart, mind, body, and soul. I write and talk often about this, that the practice of law is not arithmetic. You can't just pipe up and go two plus two, Your Honor, and the judge says four. It, it doesn't work that simply. You need to find a way where the judge is convinced that, that justice requires the result that you're advocating for, and that if the judge doesn't rule in your favor, there's going to be a huge miscarriage of justice. Take, for example, this issue we've been discussing. The black letter law is that once a rear, one child support arrears accrued, too bad, so sad, we can't waive black, we can't waive child support arrears. There's a statute that says that. In the words of a professor, we had a committee meeting the other day, said that rule is becoming more and more porous. There are exceptions. And and so the the on the other hand, how do we ask a parent for whom it was impossible to pay child support to now pay the child support for that period? during which it was impossible. So these are tough questions and they have to be presented in such a way where the judge looks favorably upon you, where you seem to be, where your client seems to be a sympathetic character and where the judge is convinced that in order to avoid a miscarriage of justice, the judge rules in the way you want the judge to rule. I love the way you approach this. Uh, your relationship with the judges there and I know your relationship with your clients. And in saying that, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask, I know this is an emotional issue for so many people, uh, so there becomes another level there. What do you tell someone who is in this very uncertain part of his or her life with losing a job in the middle of this pandemic or any time? What sort of advice, other than just go file immediately, what, how do you help them get through this? So I, I take a holistic approach, and I've done a lot of studying, and I, I do a lot of speaking, and that's why this, this message is so important, because often people come to me, they found a new job, it's now three or six months later, and they say, but what do I do about the arrears? And, and there's not a whole lot to do if the person didn't file a petition. So this message is such an important message. Going back to the underlying, how do I deal with people? So when people are getting divorced, my most important message is, I can be a great guy, she can be a great gal, we're not right for each other, square peg, round hole. I don't have to be angry at my, my spouse or to get divorced. And so we can get a divorce, I write a lot on divorce without destruction, and I get my clients better results. So not only do I get my clients better results, but sometimes the other side also gets. If you study game theory, you realize that when you work cooperatively, you can both come out ahead than where you were where you don't trust each other. If you don't trust each other, something akin to the lowest common denominator, we have to get the best we can get against somebody we don't trust and make sure that they can't screw us. And so when we work together, we can come up with new ways where I get what I want most and, and the other side gets what they want most. And so in a divorce, stop if we can, if we can find a way to give the catharsis to all the anger. People are angry and they're disappointed and usually the anger and disappointment is, is as much about themselves. They don't realize that they're angry at themselves and the other. Like, why couldn't you be the person I wanted you to be? And the moment you realize that I can't change anybody else, ask smokers, I can barely change myself. And so if, if once we realize that, now we can, we can approach this on a higher plane. You lose your job, that doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean you're worthless. It doesn't mean you don't have value. If you're a human being, then you have value as a person. And if you believe in yourself, you can go out and find another job. Now, maybe that job was wrong for you. Maybe, maybe it didn't tap into your passion. So I'm a big believer in finding work. The, the old adage, find a job you love doing, you'll never have to work another day in your life. If you find something that taps into your natural inclination and your natural talents, you'll probably earn more and you'll be happier and you'll be more, and, and, and you'll feel more fulfilled. And so, if we can help our clients find the work that's most suitable for them, if we can help clients get out of relationships where things weren't working and get them into new and better relationships and they can remain friends with the other parent of their children so that they can both walk the children down the aisle when they get married so that they can throw joint birthday parties and joint celebrations, that's the greatest gift that we can give our children. 
pretty unique approach. That's great. Uh, anything else that you want to add on this topic of modifying downward? So remember, try whenever you're doing anything, try to be to be fair and reasonable. So, so when people start playing, well, I'm going to screw the other side, and I'm going to do this intentionally, and I'm going to they get that thing, but I won't take the job that's offered to me, that's always a recipe for disaster. Do what's best for you. Try to make as much money as you can make, and then let the other pieces fall into place. There are lots of people in the legal system who try really hard to do the right thing. We try to do the right thing for our clients. Judges try to do the right thing for litigants. So don't play games with this stuff. Don't try to be uber smart. It's the moment somebody's trying to outsmart somebody else. That's when the system goes awry and they get hurt really bad. Do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. And, and, and file the petition really early so that you have a good claim. And then things will work out for you. Solid advice. Heim, as always, thanks so much for talking to us today. It's always my pleasure, Leslie. Thanks to all of you for watching this edition of Ask the Lawyers. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can catch all of these episodes. If you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, go on over to askthelawyers.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Leslie Rohde.